What's good? It's your boy, Mr. Get Your Buzz Up. We get your buzz up. We here with DJ Payne One and Soul covering them on their stop in Madtown on their world tour. What's up, fellas? How's it going? Pretty good. We're great. We're not sick. We're happy. We're feeling good. How do you feel? I feel not sick. Not sick? Not sick. So does that mean you're happy? Any day that I'm not sick, I'm happy. There we go. There we go. And I feel like we're getting our buzz up. You are right now. Yeah. You sure the tea isn't helping with that? Um... It is helping. It is helping. That's that's my mug, actually. You notice how there's a P on it and not a you know a T or an S? I'm just saying. So, <laughs> how's the tour going, guys? <laughs> we're sharing a lot of space, and we're in close quarters, and we're, you know, um, it's fun. It's been awesome. I mean, honestly, this is probably, um, as far as, like, reception from, from fans, this is the first tour I've ever done where out the box on the first tour people are singing along and knowing the lyrics um, that's never happened for me before and we're getting a lot of really positive reception you know it's kind of I wrote some really good lyrics for him I think that's part of the <laughs> it, the secrets out there it is they know they know, they know. <laughs> so you've been on tour before but you know pain this is your first you know world tour so What's your outlook on everything, especially going over to Europe? I have no outlook. Um, the entire time, you know, we were planning for the, the U.S. dates. He was just telling me, you know, every day he'd call me up, dude, this is going to suck. We're going to be miserable. <laughs> is, I mean, I know, I know you're used to touring with coast to coast. And, you know, you tour with all these big guys and stuff. And, you know, you probably have a lot of fun. But this tour is going to suck. So, you know, abandon all those those positive memories that you associate with touring <laughs> and, and, and abandon all hope as well. So, you know, I was expecting it to be absolutely horrible, but it's been fun. So I assume, and, and now we're at the stage where we've uh, kind of um, crossed that boundary where all the shows that were supposed to suck didn't. So now we're in, in good territory, says, says Tim. Um, but now he's, he's saying, you know, Europe's going to be awesome, so... Things are different, and I don't know who to believe. I don't know. I don't know what to think. So I'm just gonna. I'm gonna be neutral about everything. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I just like to keep expectations low, especially touring in the Midwest and places like Philadelphia and on the East Coast. It's like that's for me. That's hostile territory. So to go out there and have dope shows, it's awesome. And I'm psyched to go to Cali and play some West Coast dates and play Denver Riot Fest, and then, you know, hit Europe. I mean, it's all feels really good man that was a great so. time so you mentioned your uh people are singing along and, and knowing your words now does your set consist of death drive and pattern of life or um just one or the other yeah both okay but we're not playing any old stuff which is awesome nice. like no soul we're not playing bodily humans we didn't we didn't do a, a dj Payne one remix of <laughs> salt on everything you know? why not that, that, that could have been awesome we we thought about it. We considered it. Why didn't we? I don't remember. Cause fuck that shit, man. <laughs> there, there you have it. <laughs> All original material. So um, uh, your video, um, fuck Google. That was uh interesting and and got the the comments were were mixed. It was definitely um I interesting and and seeing people's uh reaction to that so what inspired that song and what made you do the video that you did for it well i mean first i mean it really came to me a couple of years ago um when i was in my gmail i was like writing an email and it was about like some tax stuff and then i started getting ads like for h and r block and for tax software and i was like this is this is fucked up there's robots reading my emails I, this is, feels weird to me you know and then, um, you know, same with like funeral stuff. Like I'm typing about my dad's funeral and I'm getting pop-up ads for funeral, for cremation cheap, you know, and mm -hmm. cremation.net. And I'm like, dude, this is messed up, right? Um, and then uh, and then later on, uh, the, my largest outreach for me is my email list. My email newsletter is like, you know, it's why I don't, it's, I use Facebook, I use Twitter, but to me, it's all about the, like having a solid newsletter um, that I've built up over 10 years. And, um, 
Gmail changed their algorithms and started like sorting people's emails for them and started putting my newsletters in like this other um, promotions Promotion, place yeah. for all this other stuff with like, which no one reads. Um, and so like everyone I knew their newsletters dropped, you know, 50% of the amount of people who were reading it. And so it's like, that hurts me. Like that hurts mm -hmm. me financially and everybody else I talk to. And it's like, there, there comes a point where we just have to draw a line, you know? So I started at first, it was going to be fuck Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Apple. <laughs> and then, uh, then, then I was like, clearly Google's the big player on the block on that. And when I started digging in on Google, I could have made four songs about Google and not even scratch the surface. I mean, Google's leading the charge on artificial intelligence. They're leading the charge on like immortality and life extension. Google is, um, they're buying solar powered drones that are going to fly around in the sky forever and beam Wi-Fi down to Africa and give Google pro I mean the stuff when you really look into all the things that Google's doing they're trying to buy an island where they can test nanobots you know and like dangerous biomechanical shit that like could seriously cause some, some harm so I thought like you know and I can go on and on it's all in the song all the stuff they're doing mm -hmm. um but really it's just they're too big and anything but that big that has that much power is a, is a threat to, to freedom you know uh, to 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 the flow of information like eventually you know when you're looking for something you're going to be getting back from google uh, only stuff people are paying for you to see and so mm -hmm. especially with all the stuff that's happening with net neutrality and um it's just so it was very clear to me i just had to say fuck google um and i thought the best way to do it would be to use it the the aesthetic of ted talks which are you know which always <laughs> always like some like some hopeful ceo who like give you the story of how he saved a village with with his teardrops, you know, and it's like, so I just, because, uh, you know, it was funny to me, so it's fun. Fair enough. What did you think of it when you first heard it? I like everything. <laughs> no I mean, in, I made the beat. No, I, you know, I know, no in-depth thought about the video, the song itself, yeah, it's, the lyrics. It's funny. He, I, can't, I can't say anything in addition to what he said that contributes to the dialogue at all. Fair enough. He did a great job. He did an awesome job. I mean, the funny thing to me about it is what I'll give Pakalk or Pain One credit for is making a song like that could be a form of career suicide. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, for like, I don't know anyone else who would be down to do a song like that. And, and so I give Pain One a lot of credit for being down to stick it. St fly I've, the I've middle killed finger. my career so many times. <laughs> What's what's one more time? <laughs> <laughs> what show thus far has been the the livest or the craziest where the fans are just like and you're just like whoa? I was like whoa last night. Where was that at? Um, <laughs> I mean, we make radical leftist incendiary hip hop music, and we played for a very small group of self-described militant Republicans and conservatives. So it, it was kind of surreal. And they loved it? I, I don't know. I mean, they, they wanted CDs. They, it, was, it was surprisingly fun. Um, we had a good time. They were smiling. I mean, like, you know, the thing is, like, libertarians, like, when they hear the stuff I say, they're like, yeah, I agree with that. But it's like a lot of, a lot of they agree with it for the wrong reasons, you know, because they're racists or whatever. Um, and uh, so, yeah, Macomb was weird. It's a cow town. It was Macomb, Illinois. It's like a tiny town, that's supposedly a college town. Um, and that, yeah, that was definitely weird. I mean, uh, yeah, it's surreal. <laughs> But I enjoyed Brooklyn. I had a really good time in Brooklyn, um, you know, playing with Picture Plane and, um, and Chesky. Uh, it was really fun. Had, a, had an awesome vibe. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. It's hard, to, it's hard to, like, pick one. Like, you like different shows for different yeah. reasons. Yeah. I usually remember a show by, like, what was the Thai, what was the best Thai food I had on tour, yeah. you know? Fair We've enough. eaten a lot of good food on this tour. I expect, I expect that, Yeah, you know. You should. Yeah. Um... And it seems like everybody's loving it. I'm, I'm, you pay if you pay attention to Twitter or Facebook or anything. Well, we're not retweeting that the hate. All well, the I'm not that... talking about you got what you guys are talking about. I'm <laughs> seeing what fans and, and and blogs or journalists are saying when they come to the show, and 
they they put something out. So it seems like you're getting a lot of love out there. So that's always a good sign. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing like this, one of the surprises, one of the many surprises about this collaboration um, was learning that Payne One was a very good DJ. Uh, I know him as a producer, and so when and I've never performed with a DJ before. And so for me, putting a set together that's an interactive set with a DJ and someone killing it, scratching on stage, like people aren't doing that anymore. So it adds like this additional element of surprise and showmanship that I don't think, that people aren't used to seeing at my shows. Mm -hmm. I don't think people are just used to seeing in general anymore. It's like that the art of scratching and real DJing is something that is, to me, it's lost. Uh, and a lot of it, you know, because of the movement towards like electronic music and like mm -hmm. just putting a beat repeat on everything or a filter sweep all the time. Um, we, we do our share of those filter sweeps, but. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. I like the filter sweeps. But. Okay, then I won't stop. I won't stop doing those. <laughs> it's the beat, it's Actually, the beat repeats. Fan, it's the beat repeats that drive me crazy. A fan tweeted that, uh, it changed the whole dynamic of the show. I think it was, did he tweet that about last night's show or something? Somebody, I seen a fan tweet or someone tweet about that, that you rocking with a DJ changed the whole aspect of the show and it was one of the dopest shows that they seen. So that was, yeah, having DJ as part of hip hop, so definitely having that element is, is definitely great. But bringing it back in our own way gets me psyched, man. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're like Eric B and Rockham or something or feel that you know so what's what's next after the tour you finish the tour sleep obviously besides catching up on sleep and, and and that kind of stuff obviously people are loving the project you were able to fund your tour you're able to do a lot of different things with death drive and then um, um pattern life went well and the videos are doing well the tour as you say what's next what's the next move for soul and dj pain one We're currently uh, considering our options, um, but this that sounds like an exclusive, right? No, there, because be, no, our entire <laughs> our, this entire tour has just been hours of driving, and then hour long set, hours of driving. So during those hours of driving, a lot of talk happens about what the next step is. So we have we have ideas. And what are some ideas. of those ideas? Um, just, you know, follow-up tours, follow-up projects, um, ideas for for uh, future sets, more interaction. Because um, this is our first tour together, so we've now developed, I would say, a foundational chemistry where you, you get to a point with somebody that you just, you, you know, you know the other person so well musically and when you're when you're on stage you know their behavior and you can anticipate what they're about to do so you you just you're not nervous anymore you're not going to mess up even if you mess up you cover for it so that's a really fun space to be in so we just kind of want to um expand the the show from there and expand the music from there too because the musical chemistry has been established for a while yeah, I mean, the only thing I'd add on top of it, like, logistically, what are we doing next? Um, it seems like um, we're going to do a proper release of, of the Pattern of Life EP um, and focus more on Europe with it. Um, that That is an ex exclusive. Yeah, like, that's that's going to be the next thing that we're probably going to be pushing is pushing that harder through our distrib distribution and PR stuff in Europe just to kind of, like, go hard on that. Um <clears throat> Yeah, we're just, I mean, we have, we already have 15 ideas for new songs mm -hmm. uh, that we were just, we've just been like, so we're trying to approach songwriting in a way more intentional, kind of folky kind of way where, like, what needs to be said? How are we going to say it? What are we going to talk about? What methods can we use to approach this subject from a different, and that's, I, that's something I've never done before. Like, I've never been like on tour with somebody like, hey, you know, we're having this conversation and be like, you know what, that's that's a song right there. We're going to make a song out of that. Like what, you know, and then we talk about it and like, so that's really, I mean, to me, that's really cool. That's a cool way for a project to evolve. I mean, we can make a new album in a week. Um, we're just going to take our time, make a dope record and see what happens. Um, I think the main thing though, is just kind of waiting until the tour is over to kind of plot our next moves to figure out like, you know, how can we maximize what we're doing and keep building on it and not, burn the candle at both ends cool 
That's what's and up. have fun, man. And listen to No Flex Zone 15 more times. <laughs> <laughs> well, before I let you go, since you are such a um, political or I don't know how else to say rapper, what's your with the whole ISIS situation going on? What is your uh, take on that? Well, um, and you can okay. speak freely. Okay, I mean, no, I'm just trying to like think like what is my take on it. My take on it is, um, I'm 36 years old, and this is the third time in my life that we have invaded Iraq, and clearly it's not working. Clearly, it's a bad idea. You know, um, if we're talking about the concept of like spectacles and like the way that war is being waged, ISIS is so good with their propaganda. Um, you know, they're active on social media, they're active on YouTube, and they have a full understanding of how like using like the anonymous style of or of social media um, to influence what's happening. And so their whole thing of like crucifying people and putting it on YouTube and beheading journalists and putting it on YouTube, they want us to do exactly what we're doing. And that is what Osama bin Laden did and it destroyed our economy and it destroyed our country and it brought us a police state. So if we're gonna, if our answer to what they're doing is to do exactly what they want us to do, it means that we've lost already on a, on a fundamental level. Um, and one of my comments earlier today was like, why is it it's okay for a preacher to get on TV and say, oh, that earthquake happened because there's so many gay people or because Obama allowed for, uh, you know, gay marriage, but it's not okay to get on Fox News and say they chopped the head off of that journalist because, uh, because of our foreign policy, you know? An interesting statistic to me is that most of the ISIS fighters are coming from places that Obama has been doing drone strikes. You know, so like people like Democrats or whatever want to say, oh, Obama inherited Bush's mess. That's not true at all. Obama inherited Obama's mess. You know, this is the mess that he created by using drones and killing people all over the world, killing civilians, you know, massive amounts of civilians. And now we're going to go in and act like we can use drone strikes and surgical airstrikes um, to go in and take out ISIS, it's not going to work. They're going to disappear into civilian populations all over that area, and then we're just going to kill more civilians, and then they'll be in, you know, we're producing this thing. We're producing these, these psychopaths who are killing magicians. You know, ISIS are fucking psychopaths, and they're out there killing mag mag magicians, and um, I mean, I think that's such a metaphor, and um, that is what our this brutal war that we're waging on on, the, on Muslims and people all over the world, um, that's what we're producing. So what comes after ISIS? You know, that's what I'm wondering. It's like, okay, we're gonna do this, what comes after ISIS? And like, what's the answer? If you ask me what the answer is, call up Mokata El Sada and bring in the, the Iran and you know, the Shias who are, who are next on the chopping block and like ally yourselves with them. You know, Saudi Arabia is where the funding for ISIS is coming from. So to, to say that we're going to have trainings in Saudi Arabia to send people into the ground to attack ISIS, it's bullshit. You know, I mean, so, you know, I, I mean, I'm not a foreign policy, you know, I don't know how to manage an army, you know, but I, I clearly what they're doing is only going to make things worse. And it's, and ISIS is way different than Al Qaeda. I mean, yeah. it's like, I remember when, when we first invaded Iraq, Noam Chomsky was like, you know, here's the real threat here is that if we do what we're planning on doing, it's going to produce some like these Islamo fascist kind of groups that, that, that people are talking about. Like we're actually going to produce those things. And now you have a thing called the Islamic state and they're literally trying to reinstate the caliphate all over the entire earth. I mean, that's, that's terrifying. I mean, and, uh, you know, we reap what we sow. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a chance to chop it up with Soul and DJ Payne One while they're on their world tour. Fellas, enjoy your show tonight. I hope uh, the turnout is great and you, you, you do your thing. So, uh, Mr. Get Your Buzz Up, we out. Hey, man, thank you for supporting our project so much, <laughs> No man. problem, no problem. I wanted to see what you would do if I tried to shake your right hand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would give you two fingers. <laughs> Better than one. Take do it some home, crazy man. Shit. Yeah. Hey, hey, 
you can do whatever you want to the to the record man i done had some people already tell me man look i done did some stuff off your, your, yeah. your <laughs> i'm like that's what's up I'm, so, I'm proud of you you know what i'm saying and i walk off you know but that mean? i mean that's that's uh that's what how you really can uh grow a fan base 